Welcome to Art Talk. I'm your host, Jim Tripp, in the spirit of art. Today our guest is Chris Zhang from Shanghai, China, and he's a realist painter. Welcome, Chris. Thank you. How are you doing? I'm uh, fine. Let's see, uh, Shanghai, what brought you all the way well, to New London? <laughs> uh, that was uh, 1990, just uh, after the Tiananmen you know, Square. And uh, I uh, applied for several schools in the States. Um, and then I was uh, uh, accepted by several of them. Mm -hmm. uh, because my brother Henry was in Providence, Rhode Island at that time. So he suggested me I go to Rick, Rhode Island College. Mm -hmm. So that's why, well, <laughs> I came here. Well, at the time of uh, Tiananmen Square, uh, was it hard to leave the country? Uh, for for we Chinese people, it was uh, very difficult to get a passport from our government. But uh, for uh, American embassies, maybe for them, they want to help these you know Chinese did it, people. Did it help to be to. an artist? Uh, I think so because uh, you know. It's very difficult to get a visa from U.S. Uh, consulate and embassy, mm -hmm. but I'm I was uh, one of the lucky <laughs> Chinese to get uh, to get the visa and come to this country. Yeah, it must have been hard leaving. Uh, yes, yeah. Are you able to come back and forth? Oh yeah, now I think uh, I'm free to go back and forth, and uh, I. Uh, started uh, two years ago, so ninety three I went back, and uh, then 90, last year I went back. Actually, I just came back from China about uh, three weeks ago. So, how did you end up in New London? <laughs> well, I uh, when I was in Rhode Island College, I was uh, selected by the Griffiths Art Center, so I spent a year in New London. I loved uh, New London very much. I had a wonderful time. I met uh, a lot of friends and people are very nice. And uh, I, did a lo I did a lot of paintings in the Griffiths Art Center studio. So uh, after I graduated from Rick, I moved to uh, Charleston, South Carolina for two years. Uh, working for gallery. Weather. Oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a nice town, you know. I yes. like there yeah. very much. Yeah. But uh, Charleston is uh, too far to these uh, uh, metropolitan cities, just like museums and uh, galleries. New York, Boston, Boston, and uh, you know the other places. And uh, New London has a very good location. Right in between both. That's right. So I think as an artist, I love visiting New York and Boston. I can't forget these museums and uh, galleries. Mm -hmm. Also, these uh, I think I have more opportunity here yes. you know, to be successful. That's why I moved back. Uh, yeah. Successful as a realist? Yes. And uh, now I uh, bought a house in New London, so I set up my studio. <laughs> I'm on my way. Well, you're doing very well. You bought a house. Thanks. Mm, New London's lucky to have you. <laughs> very Thank talented you. artist. I'm very glad to be you know, a resident of uh, New London. All right. Well, uh, you're going to bring us over to your studio to see some of your works. Sure. In progress uh, and the works you've done. and. Uh, you have incredible strong work. It's the most enjoyable being Thank there. Thank you, Jim. <laughs> so why don't we? Uh, well, why don't you set it, set this up and tell us what we're going to see in this first role, as far as uh, your style. I mean, mm -hmm. you've painted uh, all over the place, all over China, and, mm -hmm. and now in the United States. That's right. You've traveled quite a bit. Oh yeah, I love traveling. But some of our the first works we're going to cut to. Are I believe um, uh, well. Uh, it's all through. Is it Peru also mm -hmm. that you were into the mountains? And I think that's where we first open up. Mm -hmm. Can you explain that for us a little bit? Uh, okay. The, you mean these elderly people mm -hmm. in the mountain area? Uh, this one I did in China. 
You mean the bigger one, yes. right? The big one. <coughs> I met these people when I was climbing a, a, a Hua mountain. This is one of the highest mountain in China, mm -hmm. in the uh, northwest area. So I met these people when they were climbing. And uh, I talked to them, and uh, I found that they were uh, Buddhists. Okay. So because there were several temples on the top of the mountain, it's kind of holy place. So they wanted to go there and pray. So we talked about uh, the religions and their lifestyle, you know, what they were doing, and they were peasants from a small village. So I did uh, two very quick sketches of the, the two men, and then I took uh, some pictures. Uh, yeah. Okay, well, let's go to your studio. And sure. Check it out. All right.
About uh, four months ago, I was displaying one of my this kind of subject of my pa uh, paintings in the corporate society, and one of the gallery across the corporate society called uh, Nelson uh, Wilson Gallery that were very interested in this kind of subject matters. So they wrote a letter to me asking me if I can I do a uh, few this kind of paintings. Now since I came back from China, I started to do this one. Uh, compared with uh, the other subject matters I uh, did about the Chinese minorities, this is kind of <laughs> different. So uh, talking about the, the painting, I already put uh, all the basic colors on because I uh, have uh, the drawing first. So now I don't have to worry about the drawing. I just uh, concentrate on the, the color and the, the different uh, uh, values also just like a cool and warm uh, I just put a I started these figures yesterday so they already got the basic colors so now I'm going to cover this white canvas uh, as you know I use a lot of brushes and uh, by the way I never wash my brushes so uh, the reason I don't do that just like uh, uh, many American artists do because uh, I need uh, all this kind of gray colors. For example, these two gray colors I, I mixed uh, yesterday. I saved them for today uh, because I need these color. They, for me, they are beautiful and very good uh, for my paintings. And I also, I spend a lot of time on the palette with my brushes and uh, just uh, mix the color and uh, uh, spend a lot of time trying to find the right color which I need on the right position. Uh, that's what I always do. So I don't mind spending a lot of time to mix, uh, mixing the color.
for me, I don't like uh, mixed color on the canvas. So, so I always got uh, the, diff uh, the right color on the pilot, and then I put it on the canvas. Also, you have to keep the bow uh, two kinds of brushes. One is for the dark, for or for the cool color. Another is for the light and the warm color. So, for example, this is the light and the warm color. Now, I'm using for the light part and the warm part because the light source is supposed to be warm in for this painting. And the shadow is cool. So that's what I'm doing here. It takes about uh, just like half days to cover the whole canvas, and then I will paint the details one by one until I finished. Finally, I will adjust the background. Uh, that's all I would like to talk about this painting. Welcome back to our talk. What you've just seen is Chris Zong in the studio. It almost looked like a gallery to me. It's incredible. But, Chris, I want to ask you more about the mountain scenes. Uh, were you on a spiritual quest yourself uh, when you went up into the mountains to mm -hmm. meet these people? Mm -hmm. Well, what happened when you were there? Uh, there was just one of my trip, you know, in China. I traveled a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, and I always carried my camera with me, so anything I found interesting, I just uh, took a picture. So when I met these people, I was uh, very excited, you know. Imagine. Not because of their uh, nice people. Also, they have uh, very good uh, characters, oh, which I want them. to paint. The wrinkles and lines. That's right. Also, they are just like crows. Uh, if you notice that the woman and uh, uh, she has bounded her feet. Yeah, the bounded feet. Is that still practiced uh, in China? Not anymore. Yeah. But for these elderly women, because when they were little girls, you know, they were bounded their feet, and now they still have them. How so how big would the feet grow when they were? Like that. Well, uh, because uh, my grandma had uh, this kind of feet, so I saw that she always suffered, you know, this kind of thing. But at that time, uh, way back to the early 19th century, people thought well, there was a, a, a kind of a tradition in China, of course, that's a <laughs> bad tradition. Well, that's not too yeah. far it's, uh, So the go girls. Uh, would have started uh, to bound their feet mm -hmm. when they were just like uh, uh, five or six years old. So they recently stopped. Very, the very painful. Generation. That's right, uh, from generation by generation. So I know in this country people are talking about their freedom, right? A lot of happy but, uh, women in China now, I bet. Uh, that's right. <laughs> but at that time, women, Chinese women, didn't have freedom. As American women, yeah. Did uh, do, did you have any spiritual encounters while you were at the uh, temples, in the mountains? What kind of feeling did you get while you were there? Oh well, uh, Chinese people believe Buddhism and the Taoists, okay. right? So uh, most of the temples in Hua Mountain are Buddha temples. So when I got in the temple, well, of course, all these, you know, <laughs> the religion feeling I got. But as you see in my studio, most of uh, the subject mm -hmm. matters I paint are Tibetan. Right. Right? So Tibetan temples are a little bit different than 
you know, the temples in, in you know, we call ourselves Han. Mm-hmm. Han, yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's a little bit different. And the Tibetan people are very good at religion people. They go to temples, their temples, li- like Americans go to a church. So they pray there and a lot of music. Of course, I was not allowed to take any pictures really? in the temples, like no matter the Tibetan temple or you know the Chinese temple. Yeah, so I had to remember Which the atmosphere, what I saw. Of course, I can take a people, you know, take mm-hmm. a picture of a people out of the temple. And usually, I always have my sketchbook, so I do the sketches of the people, and then come back to the studio try to fin- you know, put them together, get the idea, make the composition, and then put on the canvas. Well, watching you paint it, you make it look very easy. <laughs> <laughs> very easy. Well, I have been uh, painting 29 years. 29 now. years. Yeah, so, well, I can say this is a lot of experience. <laughs> well, we're going to see some more now. Okay. okay. Uh, well, we're going to take a, a short commercial break first, but then we're going to come back. Sure. is a process that fills our lives. See it, enjoy it. This public service announcement is brought to you by the Griffiths Art Center, New London, Connecticut. Welcome back. Uh, Chris, we were talking, you, were, you said you were painting for 29 years. That's right. Yeah, it's a good long time. How, oh, when yeah. did you start? Well, I uh, started when I was very little. Because that time I uh, only could join. So I draw walls, flowers, you know, blackboards everywhere. And then I started painting when the Cultural Revolution started. Now, did you have a choice in what you were doing? Uh, we look at China and we say, oh, the people don't have any choices of, you know, freedoms, basically. Uh, you're lined up and certain people are going to be doctors, certain people are, you know. Were you, uh, how did you become a painter? Were, you, were your parents painters? Um, not exactly. My father is a very good uh, calligrapher. Okay. So he's not a professional. But uh, I think uh, I loved the art uh, when I was very little. And, I, yeah, I, and then I just uh, developed this kind of l- love, get more and more feelings. I started uh, the Mao, Mao Zedong, a former yeah, communism leader's portrait when the Cultural Revolution started. So that's the first time I touched the oil paintings. Well, you and must I, be happy to be painting oh, with I couldn't painting stop, now. so I just uh, keep <laughs> painting, painting. But uh, I did a lot of political subject paintings in China. Well, before we get into that, why don't uh, you open us up back in your studio. Uh, we're going to go back into the uh, mountains, basically, sure. and see some of your sketches. All right. So what are we going to be seeing uh, when we cut back to your studio? 
what uh, you have, uh, I believe we open up on four figures mm -hmm. in the mountains. Mm -hmm. Now, is that Tibet? No, these are not Tibetan, these are Chinese, the Han. The Han. Yeah. Okay, well, let's check it out. This is uh, one of my uh, bigger subject matter paintings I did uh, in China before I came to this country. Uh, these four figures are the real people I met in the Huamang Mountain. This is one of the high mountain in China. Also, this is a holy place for the Buddhists. I'm not sure, but I guess these four people uh, were Buddhists. So I met them when they were climbing on the mountain. Uh, I was very surprised because the two men were very old, and uh, you know uh, the two women had a very tiny. We call it the bounded feet. Also, we call it the gold, golden feet. It's only just like about a three or four inch. How could they climb on such a high mountain? For we, the young people, would spend just a like whole day to climb on the top of the mountain. So for them, it must be very, very difficult. So I talked to them. I found that they were very interesting people. So I uh, uh, photographed them each, uh, one by one. I did a very quick sketch for the two men. And then I came back to my studio and I finished the whole painting. I just uh, uh, focused on these four faces because uh, uh, these four faces were my most, uh, you know, interested uh, to paint. Uh, of course, the the mountain was the the background. So I set up just like a, a late afternoon, so the sun coming from that direction and hit these people's face, and gradually it's. Uh, became dark and dark, so that's the painting. Uh, now I talk about uh, this one. This is the American Indian chief. Uh, that's what I call the painting. But I met this guy when I was having a show in Arizona. I went to some American Indian reservation. I saw their dances, the ceremonies, and then, you know, I took a lot of uh, photographs. I saw this face that was so interesting. I was <laughs> so excited to see this face. So I took a lot of uh, photographs. Some of them even he didn't know about that. And then when I came back from the studio, I painted the face. I thought, well, this is a good portrait. But how could I develop, you know, the idea and become the, well, the real uh, Native American. For me, they should look just like this. So I uh, went to the library and uh, borrowed a lot of books. I tried to find the Indian, uh, American Indians' customers. Finally, I, I thought, you know, uh, because this kind of face should be just like a chief. So I developed my idea, put all these kinds of customers and the jewelry, the stone, also the hand. Uh, the hand I got from the another man, of course. So combined these things together, so I finished the portrait, uh, which is one of my favorite uh, American Indians' portrait. Now let me move to this one. So far in this studio, this is the largest painting I did. I started in '93 and I finished it last year, so it almost it took about a year. This one I got the idea because since I uh, did uh, such a lot of Tibetan people, a lot of portraits and uh, you know the small subject matter paintings, I decided to uh, make a conclusion uh, uh, in this kind of subject matter. So I did a lot of studies. The most uh, interest I uh, uh, I was is the Tibetan temple. Because the Tibetans are very good Buddhists, they uh, go to their temples just like uh, Americans go to the church. So I was very interested in. I went to many Tibetan temples when I was in China. 
But uh, in the temple, just like uh, uh, they consider their temples a holy place. So I was not allowed to take any pictures. That's why I have to do a lot of drawing. I met a lot of people, went to their small villages, talked to the people, and so made, uh, did a lot of drawings and took a lot of pictures. Finally, of course, this is my sketchbook. So every big subject matter paintings, I will do uh, study and the composition first. So I got uh, this idea first, and then I finished the painting, uh, which is upstairs. And then I developed the idea to this kind of things. So praying, you know, in a Tibetan temple after they're working, or because they have a very difficult, hard living condition. Of course, these beautiful customers and a very wild lifestyle. And then I started this one. That's the drawing. I used the black ink and a little bit of watercolor. When I finished this drawing, I was kind of satisfied. I thought I was ready to do a bigger painting. But I was not sure, so I just uh, set up the canvas, try to, you know, uh, put the drawing on the canvas. So I made all these kind of squares, uh, and then put on the, the painting, and then started. Uh, during this period of time, almost the whole year, and then I change this, change that, and always find some interesting place, and then I put it on, and then uh, took it off, put it on, took it off. For me, uh, it looked like endless, so I never finished. Uh, that's it. So I uh, loaded the canvas, I moved it to several places, and then every, every time when I set up the studio, I, I started to paint again. So finally, in uh, last, uh, last winter, I finished this painting. So usually, for me, the oil painting is very difficult to do, you know. You have to get the idea first, and then you try to make a design, and then the composition. For me, the composition is most complicated, because as an artist, I always get a lot of ideas you know, <laughs> on my mind. So you change this today, and then you change it back uh, tomorrow. Or finally, you, know, you say, well, that's it, I'm going to paint it, and then I started the, the color. As soon as I made a decision, for me it's a, it's a fast because <laughs> just to put the pants on and until gotta you know ex uh, express your idea, that's it. Uh, I think that's all, and I want to talk about these three paintings.
Welcome back to Art Talk. Chris, I didn't mean to cut you off before. Uh, you were in a story about uh, when you were younger, during the Cultural Revolution, you had you could only paint Mao Zedong? At that time, yes. But uh, at home, I studied, you know, the, as a uh, masterpieces mm -hmm. from very small prints. I copied a lot of this kind of paintings. Study from the masters. That's right. <laughs> but not as the originals. The first time I saw original masterpieces was when I came to this country. Really? Yeah, that's right. So you're fairly isolated until then? Uh, in China, yes. And now you're making your own masterpieces, <laughs> <laughs> without a doubt. Thank you, Jim. Uh, well, your studio is like a museum. Wow. Your work just passes through constantly. I just uh, keep painting. You know, I paint yeah. every day. Yeah, you're very prolific. Yeah. Definitely. Without, whew, incredible paintings. Thank you. Very strong, uh, deep. Thanks. You can see your roots. Uh, You've had, had some hardships in your life, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Must have been tough coming over. That's right. Now, did, uh, I wanted to ask you about uh, your spiritual context of your work. Uh, you really get into, like, the women praying in the temples. Uh, why? What drives you in that manner? Well, uh, particularly that painting, just like uh, you already, you know, well, watched on the TV. I did uh, the sketches. I, first of all, I like uh, people very much. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, not only their characters, also the personalities. You know, we can say the uh, humanities, right? So I took the pictures and then did a lot of sketches. Finally, I put on the on the canvas. That's my that's my procedure. Right. So talk about the, the, the spirit of the artist. For me, I think uh, first of all is uh, the education. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm a Confucianist. Confucian, according to the Confucianism, education is very important. As artist, uh, he or she not only has to learn how to paint or how to draw, or how to um, sculpt, yes. right? They have to have the other knowledges, just like uh, literature and history. Yes. Uh, of course, oneself, and then put them together. I've I have seen many uh, talented artists in China, and uh, they can paint whatever they they see, mm -hmm. but they cannot create things. It's okay. kind of sad. Maybe there are too many political reasons in China, right? So tied them up. Secondary, I think, uh, is the uh, hard work. As artists, you have to keep working, practicing every day, no matter how many talents you have. So hard work, uh, just to keep, <laughs> keep life painting. experiences. That's right. So uh, get your experience and then you just uh, feel free to do what you want. The last uh, but uh, the most important for me is the love and how much you love in art. And you love to push the media too. That's right. <laughs> I uh, cannot be Michelangelo or Raphael or Rembrandt, but uh, I'm sure I love art as much as they did. Uh, I'm sure you do. Yeah, so I even told my wife, I said, well, for me, art is number one, you are number two. <laughs> oh. oh, yeah, congratulations, you're Thank newly you. married. Yeah, uh, also, you know, uh, artists' dreams are very important. I still remember one of my uh, teachers said that, she says, uh, talents, for good artists, talents are cheap, but the dreams, you know, are very important. If the artist stop dreaming, then he is a dead artist. Will die. So what kind of dream and encourages you, gives you the ima imagination, so let you create things. So for me, education, hard work, and love. And love, lots of That's love. That's the spirit. <laughs> I see that you love your work. Oh, I love my It shines my right through. Not only my work, I love all the art. 
Well, I see you were doing the um, uh, ballerinas. Yes. Now. Very beautiful. Thank you. So that mixes the dance, the music, yeah. and the artist's palette. <laughs> <laughs> now, when does your wife come over? Well, I'm not sure. I, uh, uh, we did everything you know, we can do, but uh, uh, there is a long line. So she had to stay in the line and wait for the visa to come to this country. So there's another painting right there. <laughs> <laughs> In my memory. <laughs> waiting, waiting, yes, waiting, waiting. Well, Chris, it's been a pleasure to have you on the show. That's uh, my pleasure to be here. And to have you as a local resident in New London, it just adds uh, culture and um, beauty to the city. And um, I, I really don't know how to explain it, but you're part of a movement that's coming into New London. Uh, that's powerful, and uh, you're part of the spearhead in the art world. <laughs> and I hope to be as dedicated as you are in my work. <laughs> <laughs> you are a very good artist, Jim. You, there's no question about that. Well, uh, thank you for being with us. And thank you. Welcome to Art Talk. Uh, uh, signing off now. This is Chris Zong. Uh, I, I, we. Don't get many artists like this, and I'm a, it's been a pleasure to interview them. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.